If you want to add tubeless liners or tubeless inserts to a set of wheels, it can be quite expensive. But what if I told you that you could do the same job with stuff that we picked up on Amazon for a few quid? Well, you can. Okay, so what I have in here is, well, I'm not gonna get it out because there's loads of it, but I've got about 10 meters of PU backer rod. That's what it's called anyway. I had no idea what it was called before I set out to find out. And basically it's what they make tubeless inserts out of. This stuff is exactly the same. So it's quite robust backer rod that you, Andrew, what do you use it for? No idea. No idea. See, neither of us have any idea. But what I know about this stuff, it is water resistant, so it won't absorb your sealant. And then should you have a puncture that your sealant can't seal, it should be able to, well, allow the tire to stay on the rim at least. So before we dive into how to make tubeless liners out of that stuff, I thought I should share some of my experiences with actually using tubeless liners. I've used them in road races, I've used them for road general riding, and I've used them in mountain bike and cyclocross. So, oh, and gravel too. So I think I've covered all bases. And well, I'm not a massive fan of them for general road use. I find that actually changing your tire should you have slashed it, and sometimes that happens, so you, sometimes you have to stop and fix the tire. That's not so good. It makes the tire really, really hard to get off. For racing, they're brilliant. They're a brilliant safety measure, and I think everyone should be using them who's running tubeless. If you have a blowout, the tire is gonna stay on the rim. That's not only good for you, but that's also good for everyone around you, and really, you should be respecting the people that you are racing alongside. Take things off-road, and well, for everything, gravel, mountain bike, cyclocross, these things are brilliant. They protect the rim a little bit if you have a proper rock strike. And then for the rest of the time, they just mean that your tire is gonna hopefully stay on the rim when you're running super, super low pressures. For cyclocross, which is the installation that we are doing today, that's got an extra benefit because the one issue that I have with tubeless tires in cyclocross is when we get into the really muddy conditions and you go to make your tire pressure as low as possible, I'm talking like 10, 11, 12 PSI, the tire just doesn't want to stay on the rim. Tubulars were the only way to go in the past. Now using these tubeless inserts, I think that you can get pretty much the same performance as a tubular tire with a tubeless setup. I can't actually remember how much I paid for this stuff, but the Vittoria Airliners, which I do highly rate, they are 70 odd quid for a set. So, you know, uh, this was under a tenner for a 10 meter length or something like that. Um, they come, one important thing, before you go and buy this exact stuff, one important thing is that they come in different diameters. So this is a 30 millimeter diameter. Um, we are installing on a 33 millimeter tire. So I'd always recommend going for the one below what you're installing on. So there's not much that you actually need to do this job. We've cut a length of this roughly. We're gonna to have to trim it down in a minute. Uh, I've got some tire levers. I've got some sealant because I can imagine that quite a bit's gonna come out of there. Um, and yeah, this is already a tubeless wheel, so we shouldn't have too many issues. I do have a tubeless pump though, and um, obviously a phone for entertainment because this is a relatively dull job. Obviously we've gotta knock all of the air out of this, unseat the tire, take the tire off, um, and actually we'll only take half the tire off. Don't take it all off. Talk amongst yourselves while I'm doing this. Ugh. What we need to do is start, a, you know, half a centimeter to the left of the valve and we want to finish half a centimeter to the right of the valve. So. Not a lot to it. It should just pop in. Ah, yes. 
So we do need to, uh, to chop this down just a little bit. So I've forgotten to bring the scissors. So I'm going to send Andrew for the scissors now. Sorry, Andrew. Thank you. It's very good. Everyone should have an Andrew. What I want to do actually is just make sure that the tube itself is rolled onto the rim because I don't really want to be mislengthening this. I'm going to I'm going to pull this out and start again. What I've done is I've I've got the thing to about here. And I just want to bring it across a little bit more. What I've done is I've got sealant now on my disc rotors which I'm sure is going to sound very quiet. You may also wish to start with a clean tyre. Obviously I can't be bothered. That should be absolutely bob on. Personally I think starting from opposite the, um, the thingy valve is going to be the way to go and we're just going to try and push this on. This is what makes the tubeless liners a bit of a nightmare for on-road general riding use but I'm going to be making sure that I push the bead right down into the well because otherwise we're never going to get this tyre on and I want to make sure that I'm finishing up at the valve. So while we're there I think it'd be a good time just to drop a bit more sealant in so we'll go for a very scientific that much no see that's just gonna ah we're gonna be we've got to be slow and methodical and let the sealant drip round maybe even if we pinch uh, no it won't Okay, so that's gonna that's gonna piss out of there, which is which is just what we want. Let's see if we can. I've never mounted a tire like this before. We may as well just flip it up. See if we can't. You could of course use you know an injection thing to pop the. Uh, pop the sealant in there but evidently I couldn't be bothered and we've now made a mess because of that. It's in, let's see if it inflates. I do need to clean my hands. <laughs> right let's uh, chuck that down and then we'll pop it down here and then there's lots of sealant coming out of that valve. with plenty of pumping, I believe that's done. It is indeed done. We've done a thing. So as you can see on our tubeless wheel, it was quite an easy install. Um, we have got sealant pretty much everywhere. So this is why you don't do it inside because um, then you'll be in trouble. Um, but one thing that we've got to do now, it's all well and good us sticking a piece of foam inside a tire and saying look at how good we are we've actually got to go and test it out see if this solution actually works um, so yeah I best get this out on a cross bike and go and ride over some routes or something so let's go and see how it works Well, there you go. I'd call that a very, very big success. Um, personally, I don't see any disadvantages to this system. It may be that the more expensive options have some hidden feature that I've completely missed. But to be honest, I highly, highly doubt it. So if you are looking for tubeless liners, um, PU backer rod. It's under a tenner for a box of 10 meters. And that means that you're going to be sorting out a lot of bikes. Let me know down in the comments below if you've had some more successes along the DIY front. I, I kind of want more tricks like this. Um, anyway, before you go, remember to like and subscribe and we will see you in the next one.